We're three minutes late today. Apologies, everyone. I'm so sorry. It was all Ryan's fault. Ryan, Ryan, Junaid, Mitch, what's up, man? What's up, guys? How are oh, we doing? Ready to do this. Ready to do this. Let's get live trading started. I know that you do guys it. out there are worried about the market. Guess what? We're here to solve that problem. Let's do it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. Oh, it's Vegas law, that phrase. Kiana. Fisher. Joy. Joe. Cards drawn are the past, ones to come or future. And the best part, it's beatable. What's going on, traders? How we doing out there? Let's go ahead. Let's get live trading started here. I'm going to go ahead and bring on the boys, or should I say, little Christmas jingle here? Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring. Snowing and blowing and bushels of fun. Dude. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Dude, my eyes are burning from that. Sometimes you just can't unsee things. Hey, I, I see you Damn guys it, got Mitch. some. I see you guys got a little, a little Dude. move there, a little, little, little hips going. I, I see you. I see you. Don't worry. Mitch I just wanted to get I, everyone fired up with the hip action. I, 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 I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, you know, fair here since I made you guys. You know, I, I put myself as the the girl from Elf here. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Gather round. Yeah, but I've still got the image of me, Zunin, and Ryan swinging on. <laughs> I was going to say, that doesn't actually make it less worse. That <laughs> almost adds a different layer of bad to it. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, that's how it goes, guys. Uh, you got to get in the Christmas spirit. I, I, thought I, was having a good day. I thought I was having a good day, but I may have just turned. Uh, anyway, yeah. how was everyone's weekend? Pretty awesome, man. I had a charcuterie board that was to die for. Wait, Zunin, <laughs> Zunin, check your mic, man. I think you're on the wrong mic setting. Because we can't hear you. Who, who, who's the prettiest? Looks like someone's calling you out, man. What? Exactly. You see? Exactly. You see what I did there? Spencer answered. No. Appreciate it's you. Just, appreciate <laughs> you I, I forgot uh, to turn on the go live button. But it was good, man. It was a good weekend. The few good Xmas movies. Called some. <laughs> yes. Yes, Mitch. Mitch, come on. Oh. Hey, hey, I enjoyed that one, man. I, I, I never seen you move like that, Spencer. So uh, yeah, no one has. All right, uh, <laughs> no one has. Let's get to the market. Yeah. Let's see what's out there, guys. It looks like it might be a day where I, I, I'm not sure. I think we might get some rebounds, but I'm still going to be looking for some shorts. Uh, there's a lot of stocks I think can drop down. Uh, but let, let's go ahead. Let's maybe take a look. I, I'll go first here. I'll lead. Uh, first stock I'm going to be looking to keep dropping down is Lucid. I talked about this 40 mark. This is that that mark that I was looking at when we started cracking here, the 50. Now I'm going to be looking for us to come down closer towards 33. Uh, reason why is the negative news already with the chart that was heading towards a support, I think could break it through today through that 40 and then it head down towards 33. So Lucid is one that I have on watch for short side. Uh, long side, I'm going to call out Goldman Sachs here. Uh, so I'm going to be looking for Goldman Sachs to kind of push on up through 390s, multiple highs in that area. So if we get through that 390s, I think we could get to 400. Um, so you talk about a 10 point raise there, maybe for a five point risk here. We'll see what happens in Goldman Sachs today. Uh, another one that I'm going to give out is an energy play. Uh, e XEL. I'll be looking for this one to kind of push back on up to 67. Uh, we'll see if we can get it on up there. This one isn't going to make a huge move. I don't see like maybe a 10% mover in the day, but hey, if I could get three, 4% on this XL, I'll definitely be watching that. And another uh, short side stock, I'm still watching Sprout to kind of break down through the 90s. This could be a good short for us. And I'll be looking for some other software application plays also. All right. Uh, I just want to give myself a quick pat on the back here uh, for 
Monday.com, which uh, <laughs> if you're watching this show on Friday, you saw me. Well, poo-poo. even before that, we were talking about Monday, man. Poo poo Monday, uh, straight off the open, straight off the open, right moving with it, right with Asana off their bad report. And uh, if, if you took that trade, congratulations to you. Um, I, I have a hard time seeing the the follow through continue to the same extent today. It could stay, it could certainly keep going down, uh, but that was a pretty dramatic move for one day. What I'm watching today is mostly it, it's mostly just any stock, and this is just my screener tool. But it's, I'm not really looking at anything here right now. I'm just watching any stock with a pro, a PE ratio below like 25. Right, so I, I'm going to spend a lot of day today in, in the details widget on Pro, and uh, in my, I'm going to I'm going to make a screener here. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now, but um, to, because the, the the quote unquote value stocks, and I I would define value in in this market as anything with a PE below 25. That's what's held up relatively well compared to the rest of the market over the last two weeks. So I'm talking about Home Depot, I'm talking about Lowe's talking about consumer staples, right? Like uh, like Procter & Gamble, right? I'm talking about uh, Costco. Actually, Costco reports earnings this week, but Costco's held up relatively well to the rest of the market, right? So basically, uh, utilities, right? Some real estate. So I'm just watching anything with a low PE, lower PE today, seeing A, can it hold up? And if not, how, do, how bad do we break down? That's basically where my head's at today. Yeah, Spencer, I th- actually think that's really good too, right? Because I think next year might be the trade for value stocks, which is what you're talking about when you're talking about low Next PE year, it's right, it's right now, it's happening. So that's what I mean. This yeah. might be setting up for a year for value stocks to outperform growth stocks or outperform tech stocks next year as, as a full year. And you might be getting that set up now. You might be getting an opportunity to position yourself for that now here ahead of the year. So yeah. uh, I like that. That's something that I'm constantly watching as well. I definitely want to watch to see how the industries trade. I mean, especially the IWM, right? IWM has just been blasted off of its highs. We're back down into the channel that we spent most of the year in after it looked like the IWM was going to break out. So I want to see how that trades and how the rest of the small cap market trades. Uh, And in addition, um, you know, I'm going to be watching a lot of those value stocks. You named Costco. I'd be really interested to see what they have on their earnings report. Uh, But I also want to watch, you know, stocks like Apple, for example. That was that was deemed the safety trade, right? Not even really beaten down. If you look at at a chart or a comparison of something like AMD versus Apple, for example, you'll realize that AMD is much farther down from its highs than Apple. So my question is here, does Apple catch up or is this the safety trade that helps keep it higher uh, through this volatility? We don't know yet. Yeah, we we don't know. It, it, to people that, you know, we, Mitch and I were talking about this this morning, right? Because th- there's a school of thought that says, yes, Apple is a value stock. And there's a school of thought that says, absolutely, in, in no world, is Apple a value stock? Well, if everything is relative, then Apple does, is a more of a value stock than like all these other crazy high flyers, the ARKKs, all of the Kathy Wood stocks, uh, basically all like high growth. Because Apple is not like high high growth, but it is. So it is. It is more value compared to them, but it certainly is not value compared to like like we said, defensive utilities. Yeah financials, right? Those are way more to the value end of the spectrum than Apple would, uh, but it's all relative, right? Um, R- R- Ryan, can you go ahead and share your screen for us so we can see your chart? Oh, absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I had, uh, all right, guys, like always, guys, smash up that like. We're trying to grow the Benzinga Live family here, so you guys do us a favor. Smash that like. Hit the share button down below. Let everybody know we are trading live here. Um, let's keep it going. We need at least 200 likes before the bell. So definitely smash on up. What are you seeing out there, Ryan? Didn't I just tell you? Yeah, Ryan. Did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and go, I'm Ryan. Don't worry about it. If you want to you're up. We talked about Apple. I'll just kind of give the levels that I'm looking at since Ryan teed me up here. So we talked about that dark pool uh, print that happened last week, right? That 10 10- Point five million shares that were traded at 165.30. I'm keeping an eye on that. You can see how nicely it went ahead and rejected there. So we need to get above it. I have an alert set near 162. So that's where I would look to possibly get an entry. But ultimately, this 160 level down here is where I'm going to be looking to possibly go long here. We'll see what ends up happening 
with Apple. Above 165.30, though, would be really nice. So far, it's chirping its way on up. DT is one that I grabbed some calls in on Friday. You had someone who went ahead and rolled down their previous position. They went ahead and sold the $65 calls expiring on February, and they bought an additional uh, millions of uh, contracts, or excuse me, millions of dollars of worth of contracts of the $60 calls expiring in February. If you go ahead and look at the daily here and you kind of get your fibs going, you can see how well it bounced because this is exactly where they kind of came in around that area. And you can see how well it's holding the, um, the fib level bounced on up. So if you're not in this trade already, what I would look is maybe set an alert around this $57 area because if it comes back down to it, you can go ahead and get those calls. Again, these are $65 calls expiring in February. Where I have this highlighted is where those options came in. You can see the volume that spiked in, came back, held it, right? You can see that it held support where it was initially and then made its way on through. So something to keep in mind there. Um, let's see what else we've got here. I don't really have anything else. Lucid, you already talked about it. I've got to look and see if that news is kind of like um, anything actually worthy similar to like a baba type thing where it's like oh a delisting type thing I, I haven't done any research on it but if we do break um above or below 37 i would definitely look to go ahead and go short on that spy i had a fun time playing spy on friday um so i'm going to look to see maybe set an alert around 450 50 because if it comes down there again you can see how well it held bounce right back up into the close. I expect that to be a major, major support continuously as well. But if we can get over 460, I would go long. If we get a bounce possibly near 450, I would look to take something. But if we break that 450 and especially the 448, I could see a little bit more of a downside and that's where I would go short. All right, we got nine. It's nine twenty. We got ten minutes until the open. Um, also, keeping an eye on crypto. Obviously, the the, the the cryptos, but also the miners. Right, they're they're getting uh, taken out behind the woodshed this morning and just beaten. Um, you know, it it is what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, some of these crypto miners have also like, I don't know, held up. I don't know. I feel like I feel like there's more pain here. There, there's there's more pain for the for for the HUTs and the BITFs and and the the riots and the maras of the world. I I'm, I'm just getting that that so that's just a sense. That's yeah. not based on anything. So um, I didn't I, go. I, I'm not be trying to find a dip here in any crypto in in, in any, any miners. Yeah, I did not go over the VIX here. This is something else that I got a chance to use on Friday. I don't use it that often, but I definitely need to because it worked out very well trading Friday, especially with those lottos that, you know, spike up and down very fast. Um, $30 used to be the previous resistance, as you can see right over here, right? Kept rejecting, kept rejecting, but then obviously on Friday, you know, went through it. Right now it's below 30 bucks. So you want it to kind of see if it can go ahead and break 30 again, and especially if it can break 32 or not. I believe 37.55 is the year-to-date high. There it is on... February area, or excuse me, late January. This is when we had the GME meme stock craze. Um, so this is where we almost went ahead and tested it and broke it on Friday. Thank God we didn't, I guess, if you were long. Uh, but I'm also going to keep an eye on VIX. I recommend if you have a screen and if you have some real estate, go ahead and keep an eye on it as well and see how it behaves. Um, if you don't know much about VIX, you can take a look at it, but it's pretty much like a fear gauge, if you will. Um, I believe it's reactive, but it still works from a technical basis as far as I have seen. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really, the VIX is a really good thing to follow. And to your point, Zunaid, you know, if you don't watch it, um, you know, if you have a space for a chart on a screen, throw it on there and watch it and see how it correlates to days where the selling is just too tough or where you just don't want to participate. Uh, you had had, on your zoomed out view, you had the, the line in there that I think is the most important is that one right around 15. Uh, 14, 50, 15. That area seems to be the bottom area for VIX. Every time we get back down there, there's some type of event that causes the market, the broader market, largely to, to sell off. And when we get to those highs, we end up pulling back in, as you can see. So to kind of to, to as to where we're going next, let's see if we if we kind of come back in from this recent peak that we have right around the 30. And what are we at now? We're looking at 2905 here, right before the open on the VIX. So if that gets uh, pushed back in a little bit, we could be set up here for a nice run today. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you absolutely nailed it. Definitely a nice little bottom there. Anytime it gets around the 15 uh, point area um, for sure.
Yeah, and some, sometimes people don't realize how much selling actually needs to take place in order to keep an elevated level. Now, you know, 30 is not terribly high. This is definitely something that we can deal with. But if in order to keep that VIX elevated like that, there needs to be relentless selling pressure. So it'll be interesting to see if we get that. I suspect the VIX comes in a little bit. Today. Yeah, I mean, during COVID, we were all the way at 86. And what I'm sorry, it should be not COVID, but during the March lows of 2020, mm -hmm. we were near 86. So it can get that high. It can get that crazy. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, but you know, you want you want actually going back here, you can kind of see how it was rounding out around the twelve dollar area as well. So yeah, definitely good to keep an eye on the VIX if it gets around that area. This is future, not today, not tomorrow. But say in two months, if VIX can ever get around that fifteen, sixteen dollar area, might not be bad to maybe grab some longs on the VIX. I believe you can grab that through VIX and also UVXY as well. And I'm seeing a couple of people in the chat mention CFVI. CFVI mm -hmm. will be on watch today. Uh, yeah. That's, that's going to be moving around with DWAC and PHUN. So that's DWAC and PHUN are the other tickers that are somewhat related to this. I'll be honest, I don't really have a strong feeling on this either way. Um, these stocks ha have have moved around. They've been crazy before. I mean, I didn't think DWAC was was obviously any good. That thing went to over 100, 160 or something before coming back in. So I don't, I can't really tell you where this is going, but what I can tell you is that these should absolutely be on deck. And as long as the volume stays around today, uh, you should be able to trade this. If you are traded, you know, make sure you stay within your plan. If it's a day trade, don't become an investor just because it goes wrong. Keep your stops, uh, keep your stops tight, keep your losses small, and, and always look for the next trade. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Zoltan. I think he, anything exclusive that Benzinga gets, I assume it's from him. He yeah. had exclusive comments from the company, I believe at the 310 mark. You can see that nice volume pop. I mean, ever since then, that stock just has not looked back. So if you were a Benzinga Pro user, you got the exclusive news first and you got to act on it. So shout out to Zoltan. All right, real fast, I want to do just a quick, quick crypto update here if we can. Happy birthday, Dogecoin, to celebrate. Oh, wow. We, we will put every single crypto in the red because that's how we do here. Uh, so um, we're, we're not much to say, right? Right across. I, I guess the silver lining here is um, if you're watching Bitcoin and, and ETH uh, this weekend, you know that the dip has already, uh, a lot of the dip has already been bought, right? Bitcoin got down to what, like 42. Um, so we're at 48 and a half now. ETH, we're back above 4,000. So, yeah, it's red. It's not as red as it was. Um, I I will maintain my maintaining my stance that, uh, you know, every, every dip is uh, is probably a dip to be bought uh, in, 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 the, in the biggest cryptos. I, I, I'm speaking mostly about Bitcoin and ETH and not so much about like, you know, Doge and Shiba and all that stuff because I that that those are just you know memes but um you know th th this is how crypto has been we are in a risk off environment crypto is a risk on asset uh in the short term uh i it is core it is correlated so uh crypto week not a real surprise today um i'm not very excited about uh the bitcoin miners um but i i, I would be much more willing to buy the dip in, in bitcoin itself or eth or solana or, or Cardano or, or, or any of these here. But this is your look at your crypto heat map today. It is obviously right across the board. Uh, if you want some free Bitcoin, you can get it. All you gotta do is download the Voyager app. Use the offer code Zing, Z-I-N-G. Fund your account with a hundred bucks, make your first trade and Voyager will give you 50 bucks in free Bitcoin. All right, it is 9.27 now. We got two minutes and change until the open. Let's keep an eye on the chat. You had, yeah, keep an eye on the chat. You had someone request a Rivian um, chart. You, if you want, you can throw mine up there. Sure. Rivian, yeah. I did I miss this trade. trade. I am a little upset that I missed this trade because look at that. A beautiful $100 bounce on Friday. I did not get it. I wasn't paying attention to Rivian whatsoever. I should have put an alert on there. Again, in pre-market, $100 bounce. You've already got yourself $7. What's done is done. Let's talk about what we can plan. If you can, if you have a system that lets you set an alert, which if you don't even have a broker that sets you an alert, find another broker. Um, I would go ahead and set an alert. Matter of fact, I will do it. 
around that $100.50 area. That way you can possibly get a bounce. Maybe even if it's a dollar, $2 bounce, right? If you have a two to one ratio, you'll be okay. That's a decent ratio to have. Um, in terms of going long on this, I don't really know. I guess the pre-market high at the moment is about 107.56. You can see it's trying to you know go above it. Um, so maybe you can go long there as like a quick trade or something like that, but I just don't really see it. Yeah. Matter of fact, look at this. We talk about how the previous, um, resistant, or excuse me, previous support ends up being resistance. You can see right here acted as support. Now it's acting as resistance. So yeah, if it goes over 108, maybe you can, you know, trade it to the long side. I don't have that strong of a conviction on it. Uh, but below a hundred bucks definitely should be a great, great short. Uh, but you can also play it to the bounce. So you can play the bounce of 100, get yourself a couple of bucks. Then if it goes ahead and tries to break it, uh, you can wait and be patient and grab some puts. Nice Doc you. Nice setup here. Doc you, creative videos. Um, let's get to Doc you in, unless you can do it quick here because we're going to open in like 40 seconds. I'll go to do it quick. It looks right. like the 132 went ahead and held. If it breaks below 132, you can go ahead and go short. Right here is a good area to go long. Your target should be around 139 if you're going to go long here. But below 132, you should go short. Nice. All right. That was quick. I got gotcha. you. Very, very very concise, very succinct. Thank you, Nate. All right, guys. Yeah. I'm going to be looking for maybe Tesla short out the gates here. We'll see what happens with Tesla. But I'm going to I want to look to see a quick flush here out the gates through 995. That thousand mark is holding well right now, but we want to see it flush down and get on through that 995. We'll see if we get a bounce near that 1,000 to short. We'll see what happens with Tesla today. Uh, I'll be we'll keeping on on AMC. AMC tried to give themselves a, a pop with the NFT headline this morning, but um, risk on stock in a risk off environment uh, not even an nft headline can, can save you uh, i think so we'll see um chart chart looks pretty Here go good luck folks chart looks pretty let's bad. do it guys let's bring up my scanner whoa where is my scanner benzinga pro see what's moving off the open these guys will look for some trades i will narrate for us here put put some put movers put trades put all that in the chat for us well, tell us what you're seeing because we can't see it all To do. Apple pushing right out of the gate here. Same with Tyson. Mm -hmm. Actually, you got a lot pushing here. You got U.S. Steel yep. pushing out of the gate. You got Moderna pushing out of the gate. A, just a smidgen. Nothing nothing crazy. I think what will be really interesting is if we hold any of these moves much past the morning. I think if we yeah. do that, that really kind of sets up for a good rest of the day and then perhaps even a gap tomorrow. Uh, yeah, as... as Luke just noted uh, today's the day that but the BuzzFeed SPAC converted. So BZFD uh, is is your new ticker, and that that did pop off the open here. Uh, but again, SPACs risk on asset, risk off environment. Watch out. Uh, what is it? BZFD. BZFD. Yeah, BuzzFeed. I don't have it on my charting platform. It just it just opened. Uh, you do have some part of the dipping happening in in some of the crypto miners. A little bit, little bit. Nothing too crazy. Docu continues its bounce here, clearing out 135. Let's see if it builds above 135. That might help it actually push back up into that gap. Okay, if you we actually have two gaps here with Docu. We really got to push back to 154, and then your other gap start really is 180 to 230. I don't think we touch that, though. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think one of the things that's notable here is hmm. both the airlines and the boats seem to be kind of pushing off of the open. Now, Spence, I know you said there was a lot kind of pushing off the open, so maybe that's kind of going together. But, uh, but those, those are those are both moving, and that might be on a kind of a snapback from realizing that this Omicron isn't really all that bad. Mm, not looking good for the semis here. NVIDIA not great off the open. AMB not yep. great off the open. Uh, those two had, had held up stronger, better. Than, than a lot of their tech, their big tech counterparts. But NVIDIA um, now down 4% uh, for the day, uh, leaking off the open here. So not not a good, not a great start of the day for NVIDIA. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I noticed yesterday is I, I actually uh, checked out the opening print of the futures last night, and they all opened up a little bit, and then they kind of traded up. And then the NASDAQ uh, seemed to go negative. So we seem to be seeing that again here this morning, where um, Dow's still positive, and we're up 300 
320 plus points here on the Dow, uh, 20 handles on the S&P. And uh, you know, we're actually, I believe we're up on the NASDAQ as well. No, we are, we are down 34 points. What's a... Uh... Watching, yeah, fun kind of holding in there. All right, guys, I got that uh, flush flush through the thousand on Tesla. Going to look for a bounce to 995s here to get short on Tesla. I'll let you guys know if I get it. There's a, there's a great question in the chat I want to get to when we get two minutes here, but I don't want to interrupt anyone's trade explanation. So. Uh, All right, guys, looks like we got over 900 traders in here, guys. So definitely smash the like, guys. Let's keep this going. We do this every single day live. So if you guys could do us a favor, definitely smash up those likes. Get us on up there. And also hit the share button while you're down. Let everybody know we're trading live, baby. Let's keep it going. All right. There's a good question in the chat was from uh, someone whose name I'm going to butcher. So I, I apologize. Elusigan, did I get that right? Elusigan. Quick question: To what extent does pricing in the after hours play coming into the opening bell? Uh, it is not a dumb question. Uh, let me bring up my my pro here. This is my Benzinga pro. Uh, all I did was I just went and uh, look for uh, look for the biggest movers of the day, and I, I just want to show you this chart. Okay, this is ISIG. I don't know the stock from a hole in a wall. Okay, I have no idea why it's up, but that's not the point. Okay, uh, the way. I would answer your question is looking at the pre-market slash after after hours movement uh, is almost like uh, turning the lights on when you walk into a room. Okay, uh, even if it's a room you already are familiar with, right, and and, and you, you you know where things are. Uh, without looking at the overnight action, you you see a stock opens higher or a stock opens lower. But you don't necessarily get the whole story. You you don't get every little crevice, every, every little detail. Okay, this is so. This is a one minute chart of ISIG this morning. If you only saw Friday's close, um, and because this this is a one day one minute chart. If you only saw Friday's close and this morning's open, then you would see, wow, this stock opened up huge today. It opened up at 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 six sixty, and it closed at what 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 it closed at five five something. Uh, closed at uh, closed at 494, open at 650. Huge opening gap for ISIG. Well, not so fast because if you look at what happened overnight here, you can actually see that yes, it opened higher, but the stock's actually been going down uh, pretty steadily for the last. In this case, it's, it's only the last 15 minutes here. But um, this tells you the whole story. A lot of times, the the high, the pre market high. But the pre-market low is somewhere that's like way above or way below where the stock actually opened up. And even though you opened higher or you opened lower, there was a chance that your stock may have topped or bottomed, you know, three, four, five hours ago. And then you spent the, the entire morning leaking or the entire morning coming back. Um, not looking at that history sort of hides that pattern to you. Um, so that's why it's important because uh, so it, it does affect the, the open, obviously, because it, it tells you it gives you a better hint of where a stock's going to open up. But it also tells you, like, OK, what's the story of the morning? If a stock is up 50 percent, that doesn't really tell me anything. It, it, the stock could have been going down for four hours into the open. I don't know. So that's why uh, looking at that data is important. I'm yeah, gonna go just, short Lucid. Sorry, I'm gonna go ahead, short go Lucid. Go Forty dollar puts. Forty dollar puts for this week. Going short on Lucid. Got it for about three dollars and twenty cents. If it goes above forty one, I will go ahead and be out of this trade. But forty dollar puts on Lucid. I like to look. Nice. Are you looking for like a thirty five test on a on a fall, on a breakthrough down through forty? Uh, let me I, I switch to Apple because I'd already in the chart. Give me one second and pull it yeah, back yeah. up. No, no, yeah, I, I would first. The first thing would be to kind of get that um, pre market, right? So let's just say around $39.10 would be my quick, quick take profit. And then the rest, I'm looking for $37.50. Um, and then we can kind of continue our way down. Gotcha. Uh, but that, that first target would be $39.10. Okay, uh, I do have to hop though because at, at ten thirty we have our future show with Ninja Trader. I got to go prepare for that, so uh, I'm gonna leave you guys. Um, but keep making trades, keep hitting the like button, everyone, and I'll catch you guys in an hour. Appreciate you, Spencer. Sounds good.
All right, Swear. all right. Let's keep it going. What's up? What's up? You Swear. did great on the name. Square, Mitch, really weak out of the gate here. Square, we should let's take a look there. Square, another one of these right. really good companies. One too. second. We should really kind of take a look and see where this would make sense to actually. Uh, long, long XEL, long XEL, guys. Um, okay. Some long, I talked about this trade pre-market, just took it right now off that candle. It just closed up, pushed through 66. Um, what's my average? Let me see here. 65.97 guys so i'm right at pretty much underneath the 66 we're going to look for it to continue breaking out here this isn't a big trade i don't expect it to be a big trade but i do expect it to kind of trend on up and you said you were saying square square on the yeah. downside looks like a, a nice little breakdown there uh it's from 177 down towards 171 so about a six dollar breakdown there look for maybe a three dollar pushback and then a flush down we'll see what happens in that one paypal also flushing here Visa, Visa holding on a little bit well. Um, I'm just trying to take out the other look, uh, the other ones. MasterCard also a little bit down there. We'll see how these kind of flush. Definitely PayPal and Square kind of leading down there. And and on Square, uh, this actually looks like a support area here. So you might get a little bit of a bounce here. Um, we'll see. One more thing to keep in mind, VIX coming back on. We talked about the VIX at the beginning of the show. We're back above 30 here. Looks like it's coming back on. Um, you know, just 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 be careful, right? This th things could turn in a hurry. All right, let's do a little sector and industry look. What are we seeing right, cool. out the gates here, guys? So out the gates, real estate actually leading, utilities behind there, and then consumer defensives. Looks like a down day to me, but we'll definitely see what happens at the end of the day. Uh, consume uh, communication services up about 0.38 from the open. And what's in the red today is technology. So what's really getting hurt in technology so it looks like solar names are getting destroyed today guys uh solar definitely taking a downside look spwr uh one of your worst losers there uh sun w down to 354 that's that's actually pretty bad there uh spi also started to head down there jks uh japanese name a uh, chinese name a solar stock really getting hit there uh, opening 9% down. I'm going to look for a VWAP bounce there, a VWAP fade. It needs to get back to 41s and then it'll fade away. We'll see what happens. Uh, you're already, you should, you lose it. You should already go ahead and close out of that first profit target is now it is below t uh, 39 bucks and it is coming down again. Nice. The next target for me is going to be $37 and 30 cents. Rivian, by the way, just went ahead and hit a hundred bucks. Um, nice but I'm trade, focusing Zinead. on Apple as well. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank Good you, job, man. man. I was looking for that baby to flush. I was, I, I actually went long on a trade today and I was looking at some shorts. That's how you do it today. Good, good luck. I like the you. level that you went off of Me just too. to give you some, some insight also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 41. I mean, yeah. And especially that 40, it was, it was the main one for me to break it. By the way, Apple, you're above that dark pool level that I talked about. Um, these contracts are a little bit more juice than when I just entered, but I am in the damn, what I get into uh the 167.50s expiring this week wait for a little bit of a pullback my fill was about a dollar 74 right now it's going for about a dollar 95 so wait for a little bit of a pullback but if the 10 minute closes below 165 i would go ahead and get out but you can see my chart here in the middle i like how the 10 minute went ahead and closed above the dark pool level would not be surprised if this one continues its march near 167 167.75 all right, Tesla never giving me a bounce to get in there. It flushed nope. down towards 950 from that 10, uh, that thousand break right out the gates there. Uh, a little part of me wishes that I would have got short there at 1000, but I don't like going short right out the open. I think it's a little bit risky, especially with a stock that moves as much as Tesla. We'll look to see it come back to 980s. The risk would be 990s. Look for a slight tick above the VWAP. I'm going to actually look for this support to get touched 982s. And then I could risk off of that resistance right above there. Uh, you can do 87s or you can pull it up to the 90s. We'll see what happens here in Tesla. Definitely getting a little bit of a bounce back here. Docu continues to trade up as well. 136.70 here. Looks like it's trying to clear out 137. Um, but that seems interesting. Baba holding in here at 115, which seems like a bit of a surprise. And then the air, the uh, excuse me, the boats uh, still holding the push out of the open here. Uh, I noticed that the VIX... Uh, struggling with holding over a 30 handle but again it's early so we'll see how that goes still kind of taking a look for some other wind popping here which is interesting so this is out of the hospitality section here uh wind popping to the uh looks like the highs that we put in on uh thursday 
So interesting. Rivian, you had that hundred dollar balance, hundred dollars and thirty cents, I believe, was the exact number. Now you're already at a buck oh, uh, one oh two, or so one oh three now actually. So there's that. We gave you the levels pre market. You set your alerts. You can make the trade, and that's a nice, easy two to one ratio, three to one ratio um, trade. Now it's near VWAP. We'll see what happens there. But so far, nice little scalp opportunity on Rivian. All right, nice little flag out the gates for Apple. Just want to call the pattern out here. Look at that pattern, really nice above that resistance. It was 165. A couple touches of the BWAP there, and nice little push on up. You could have measured the flag here. That would have been about, let's say, a dollar 79 move on the breakout. You're looking for 150 right now. Maybe you get on up there to 167. Not a bad day for Apple right out the gates here. We'll see if it holds today. So it looks like Apple being the safety trade, which is, again, what we talked about at the open. It looks like that is holding into today's session. Um, they have they have no fear of buying Apple in, the, in this climate. Yeah, some people are trying to call Apple as value tech. I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but uh, I think that there are some people taking a look at Apple and rotating into it. Just seems safer than things like NVIDIA or, you know, or, or, or some of those higher high, high flyer names, excuse me. Like boats, airlines still looking good out of the open here. All right, um, I'm going to look at those. Pushing out of the open, sorry. No, I'm going to look at that for, since you're talking about uh, some areas there. Uh, so residential construction really doing well today, guys. I didn't expect to see this up. Uh, let's look, look at some of those biggest stocks in here. Uh, Lenard, L-E-N, doing well today. D-H-I, look at that one. Nice little push there. Um, D.R. Horton, yeah. Yep. Uh, Toll Brothers also, T-O-L. Look at that nice little push there. Um, just to mention, um, in Barron's, there was housing on the cover. Uh, and that's probably why you're seeing this kind of push there. So Barron's pushing the housing market into the next year. I thought that was a little scary, personally. But uh, there you guys have it. Investors showing that they're definitely looking at that. Look at that T-O-L breakout. Not many times you'll see a over 3% move in TOL uh, in about a couple candles there. So definitely that's on the move. Home Depot uh, definitely on the move today. 2% up, Lowell's up 2% also. So definitely you can take a look at that. Department stores not doing bad today. KSS up 5% hanging out at VWAP right now. Um, if you guys got anything, please interrupt. I'm just going to keep going through some industries for us. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead continue. and interrupt you because uh, you had Lucid Good and Tesla $40. Um, Grabbed and puts again, waiting for it to come back down and, you know, test the, at least at 39, 38 to nice. the lows of the day. Uh, and stop loss will be a little tighter. It'll be above $40.50, $40. but short on the Lucid. And on those Apple calls, you're up about 30% or so. So you can start locking those in. All right, guys, let's go back to my XEL trade. I'm still long here, looking for it to hold that pullback that we just got. Um, we're going to look for an extension above 66 through the 6625s. If we can get through that level, we'll take some profit. We'll see what happens on this XEL. All right, let's catch up with the chat. What are you looking out there, Ryan? Do you see anything moving? Looks like uh, the chat is matching. Yeah, laser, uh, ticker LAZR, bouncing off a 1350 level, really kind of sold hard out the gate on some volume. Buyers looking to take it back up here. Uh, I don't have any, any edge on this, but this is one that's really been moving around recently with some of the EV sector and some of the other autonomous vehicle plays. Um, so this has just been interesting to watch. Not in this, but a nice big 50 cent bounce right off that 1350 level. Stop that on Lucid. And and you mentioned KSS just a second ago, Kohl's, Mitch. Um, we have a, why is it moving here? Kohl's share are trading higher after uh, shareholder Engine Capital sent a letter advising them to pursue a sale um, or a, a sale or separate its e-commerce business. So um, we'll see if that ends up materializing or if that catalyst actually drives the price higher. Right. Dual sell thing a little bit. So I'm yeah, get short Tesla like here. We, we sold off a little bit, but Tesla too, right? We sold off a little bit. The VIX now coming back in a little bit more. Everything seems to be bouncing. Tesla included, if you wanted to pull that up. Go yeah, I, I haven't gotten it right now. It, it just came up really fast to that resistance. I want to see the rejection off at 989s here. Let me go ahead and pull up the stock here. Yep. So that rejection off that level is what I want to see. And then I'm going to go short. I'm going to go short literally one share here just to start it off because I want to see a flush. Highs and ARKK. All right, a short there, guys. 90, 985.02s. Uh, so 990s would get me out here, but only one share here. 
really small trading here. Uh, I don't short Tesla here often, but I want to try this. So let's go see what happens here. In terms of Lucid, was, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to make a joke. You're, that's way more important. In terms of Lucid, I'm looking at the $42 level. So I have an alert set at $41.68. If it kind of gets around that area, I will go ahead and grab some more puts. The stop loss would be above $42. Bucks, um, but we'll see how it reacts. Hoping basically for a double top for it to come back down. So you're basically hoping that this bounce is rejected at the top, and then you're going to capture that, that snapback. Yep. Gotcha. Second rejection from the 990s there on Tesla. It's a good level. Now let's see it flush through 980s here. Accu continuing its bounce up towards the 140 level. We don't want to see it back through 990s here. If it goes back through 990s, it could rip. So just be careful there. All right, catching up with the chat. I see SQ being mentioned in the chat. NUE, Apple, James, Thad. What's going on out there, guys? It's good to see you guys in the chat. Definitely smash up the like. We're doing this live. Let's keep it going. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Apple let's with go. a really nice push. Yep. Um, Apple, sure those calls are about up. I expect them to be up a little more, but they're up about 45%. Uh, so please take some gains. All right. Twitter bouncing and pushing towards its highs now. KWeb is bouncing. That's that. Uh, that's that Chinese internet ETF. Uh, that's an interesting. That's an interesting bounce here. All right. If we flush through nine eighties on Tesla, I might take another ad of one share here. Click. There you go, guys. It's got it. 982.51s now. Kind of manage this size in a little bit here in between where I have a kind of resistance and support where it's holding. And when you need to flush down below 980s here, above 990s, we get out. Apple continues to push towards highs. Ulti group running too. PHM. Those are those home builders. Yeah, those home builders are moving today. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, guys. Uh, like rotation, you know, sometimes you're trying to find the rotation. It's talked about all the time. There you go. That's literally rotation right there into the housing. If you wanted to look for some, remember today, people are looking for value plays, right? That explains it. Yep. And if you take a look at, at, at uh, gap stores, right, pushing to the highs, that kind of fits that as well. Mm -hmm. Whoa, look at that. All right, guys, if I get out of my Tesla here, we're testing on up there. Rejected it one last time there, guys. So now we if a close above 990 will get us out. Let's see it flush down. It's in the rejection there three times. If it gets above that, we talk about the rule of three, right? If it gets above that, it will go bullish. And I don't want to hold if it goes through that. So we'll see if we get yeah. the takedown here now. And let me, here, let me, let me put that up here. I was going to say I can bring Tesla up for you. Sorry about here. that. Yeah, as you guys can see, I'm a little bit. Uh, yeah, got to focus on the trade, man. Focus watch. On the trade. Yeah, there's not many times I, I have this much capital into one trade. Uh, so just trying to focus here. Yeah, and it, it, the other thing, it depends on what you're doing, right? You're short a name that likes to rip, right? So you've mm -hmm. got to keep yourself gotta keep ready. Eye on it. Yeah, got to keep your eye on it. Got to do the responsible thing, Mitch. We got your back. Don't worry. Let's watch it. Let's watch it, guys. And there's probably not many times you guys will hear me a little emotional. You hear me a little bit emotional here. But let's see what happens. Let's do it. There is what? no way. What's up? What's up? Look at look at my here. Go ahead and pull up my lucid chart. Got you. You're up right now. I had my alerts set at sixty uh, forty one sixty eight. This ticker went to forty dollars and sixty two cents, and there's lucid with about right, a dollar down. move. Yep. But, it's a volatility sorry. move. Super volatility move. There. I won't chase it. I won't chase it here. But it would be nice to have it kind of come up a little bit. Um, that's yeah, all right. tough. It's tough when you're when you're dealing with those volatility moves. That to me looks like one of those where it just went up, down, up, down. It's just volatility. It's it tries to get wash out some traders there. We'll see if it holds the push now. Yeah, I'm still gonna wait for it to get to at least 41.80 before I go ahead and grab puts. So we'll see. 
we'll see what we get. All right, so uh, Tesla just kind of did a little peak on up, like it wanted to come on up there, and then it just turned around. I'm actually getting closer and closer to my time bomb where this shouldn't get back towards 990 here, and it should really quickly go into the 80s. Right now is when we should see the bid on the app, on the bid side, just completely flush through. And you want to see some orders go through, not on the ask, but on the bid. See if we get this Tesla flush down. Boom, boom. Nine, nine seventy nines. There you go. Now it just needs to break VWAP. You don't want it holding and closing above VWAP now. So the close should not be above VWAP now. The close should be below VWAP. All right, guys, XEL also moving on up, not looking bad there. We're about to take some profits above 6630s, and then we'll take half of it off and leave the rest of it working there. Order out at 28s to close half of it on XEL. You got Apple testing VWAP. We got CFVI trying to pop above 14 here on a bounce. Hey, can you do me a favor, Zunaid? Can you throw Tesla on one of those if you're not? I got you. Done. Appreciate you. you that way we can keep minute, yours. What do you want? It doesn't really matter. Just so uh, that way, since we're both in kind of some trades around these, I you got have you. the best, I think, three charts set up right now. I got you. I got so. you. No worries. We'll stick with yours right now. You guys in the chat, if you guys see a stock taking off, like Anthony mentioned right here, guys, Uber taking off being mentioned by Anthony. Let's see what happened in Uber. Is Uber taking a move? Uh, oops. Yeah, nice little push up there to 37.50. It went from a bottom of 35.50 to 37.50. About a 6% pop there. Uh, we'll see if VWAPs hold on pullbacks for Uber. But nice mention, Anthony. Definitely, guys. We got over 950 traders, guys. I know that it's still a little early in about five minutes, 10, 10 a.m. We're going to ask you guys to smash up that like and support the stream. We do this every single day live for free, and we want to continue live for free, but we need you guys to do the favor and just smash that like. And uh, market pulling here, right? So we got the VIX trying to creep back up, and the market. this should go well with your uh, Tesla short. Sage telling us to love the energy between you guys. Yeah, we're loving it too. You know, one of the things that we're definitely working is the chemistry to kind of help yeah. you guys not talk over each other and hurt the stream. We want to help here. Apple with a really nice bounce off of VWAP. Um, hoping for a continuation, but we'll see with VIX acting out what we'll get. I'm going to go ahead and ignore the Lucid trade for now. You can see it's still trying to mess with it. I'm just focused a little bit too much on Apple. Um, so I'm going to ignore the lucid trade, but I'll give you the principle again, short around this 4175 area. And if, it, if the five minute or the 10 minute it closes above 42, you should go ahead and get out uh, your first profit target. If you go ahead and take those puts should be near VWAP. And then you kind of continue yourself down a buck lower and lower. But for now, I will not be doing paying attention to the lucid trade just yet. All right, I'm going to go to my Tesla trade here. Uh, the XEL trade rejected first profits from about two cents. So I'm watching that one. Don't want to let that get into the red, but I'm going to let it get a VWAP touch one more time and see if it gets above that. Uh, Tesla closed below the VWAP. So that's what I wanted to see. Now I don't want to see it back above VWAP. A back above 982.85s would probably even get me out here. Um, want to see this cart flushing down. I'm at 982.50s. Uh, so don't want to see it really get back above that 982.85. What's up? What's up out there? Uh, Mitch, check out Genie. I'll check out Genie when it's at $11. You guys tell me. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an alert set, huh? Yeah, I'm not looking at it till then. It's in the long-term account, guys. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I guess, I'm, yeah, that's that's crazy. It's in the long-term account, man. <laughs> um, Apple, but, really nice push off of VWAP. Still, still holding those calls. Um, bought the dip a little bit near the VWAP. 
working out really well so far. I needed to push above 167. I haven't even looked at any options, Ryan. Oh my god, what am I doing? Let me see what's what, going on. Wasn't there there. wasn't there news last week about Apple not being able to sell phones? Wasn't there some channel check news? Nah, there's always something. I mean, there was something. But yeah, it was it was about the point, <laughs> low demand, low demand. It was it was about the manufacturing apparently have, having a source or telling somebody that demand was low yada yada yada. Looks pretty good today. Looks pretty good. Right, I guess guys. someone just purchased millions of phones over the weekend, you know? So my XEL trade is getting to that point, make it or break it time. We don't want to see it get below VWAP. We want to see it get through that 66.25. If it doesn't get through here, then we're going to go ahead and just close the trade at break even. Let the trade break out if we get it. If not, then go ahead and let it go here. Uh, the good thing is that my break even is below VWAP now. Uh, so if we either let this break out and we get the reward above 66.25s, and we'll take out half there and look for the rest at 66.50. We'll see what happens here. XEL. XEL is a pretty good daily chart, too. That actually looks like it wants to go higher, and it actually looks like it wants to snap that near-term downtrend that it's in. I like that chart a lot, Mitch. All right, what's going on out there, you guys in the chat? I love to hear you guys talking about your trades out there, and if you guys ever make a great trade and want to come on, like always, mention it in the chat. We'll send you a link. We'll get you on. All right. Now, one thing I do want to mention is uh, one thing I want to do around 1015 is I'm going to go into a little bit more of a strategy time, trading lessons time. And so today we're going to go and learn a little bit more about Bollinger Bands. I, I know that we talked about uh, that we wanted to maybe get into some fibs. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. I need to do a little bit more of a breakdown for you guys to understand it in a simple basis. I think first we're going to go through Elliott Wave Theory. And so stay tuned, guys. There's going to be a lot of learning also on the backside of this show. So you guys smash that like and let's keep it going. I can't wait for that. That's I love going through stuff like that. I think that's incredibly, incredibly beneficial. Even if you're a seasoned trader, kind of reminding you some of the, some of the uh, uh, points on how those indicators are used and why should be helpful. Yeah, we're going to go through every single really indicator that. that could be used. And we're going to explain how the different ones are. There's indicators that are mainly for sentiment, right? There's indicators that are mainly for momentum. And then there's indicators also that will be for more like volume balance. You want to see those kind of things. We're going to go through all of them. Um, I'm, I'm today using a couple more. I, I added uh, the MFI index. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's a money flow index. Um, you can compare that with the check-in money flow. Check-in money flow is more used for intraday and money flow index is more used for like, let's say daily charts or longer term charts. Uh, they tell you kind of the inflows and outflows that you're looking for. So for me, let's say like this check-in money flow, I want it to be above and get into the the above the zero line if it's a positive number that's a good that's a good push for money flow you want it to be above that red line kind of the 20 uh represents kind of oversold there you, you want to see it start going into the green line that shows you that people are buying up here and money going into the stock uh, we'll see if we can get this breakout on xel here all right guys let's go back to tesla tesla's still coming down here for me but it hasn't really gave me that flush out so it held VWAP there for a second there and then crook and broke down here. I'm trying to get it to the first reward target, which would be down towards 956.94. But then after that, we'll let it really flush down. Let's see if we can get it there. And Mitch, to, to your point there on that continued move, if it actually retests 950, I think you probably do. And it breaks down through that 950. I think you probably do flush through that. That might be a good place to close your short on that pop. If we do end up snapping that level. Appreciate you. My next profit target on those Apple calls is going to be, I've got an alert set at 167.73. Um, so hopefully we can go ahead and get that going. Yeah, Jay. Uh, Jay talking about how the checking money flow tells you after the fact. Well, the, the, you, there's a lot of indicators that are what you call lagging indicators. They mm -hmm. tell you information after it's been done. Why is it still beneficial? Yes, because what you want to be doing is looking for divergence from price. So do the indicators match the price action that you're seeing? That's what those indicators are mainly used for. They're mainly used to look to see back 
did the price diverge from the indicator or did it follow it? If price action follows the indicator, then that indicator could be working for that price that day. And so that's how a lot of traders will end up looking at it. And just to kind of take that point a step further, I mean, pretty much any indicator that uses the price is going to be reactionary, right? Think about it, because if it uses the price in order to calculate the value of the indicator that you're using, that price needs to have happened before that value can be calculated. So just it's going to be it's going to be reactionary just in nature. The key is going to be what are you what are you taking from that? How, how are you going to be able to apply that? Are you noticing a pattern? Is there a, is there something setting up? Is there a pattern setting up? Is there a trade setting up? So there's, there's a lot more than just, you know, seeing a number and saying, OK, well, this number says this. So that means go long right here or go short right here. Uh, it's never going to be that cut and dry. All right, guys, uh, XEL did not want to get through that 625 here. We don't want it to break 66 there. It looked good there, but it rejected hard there. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Definitely break even on the rest and see what happens. I'll show you it right now. So it looked like it wanted to break out. Right here was the breakout spot. Let's see if we get back above that resistance trend line and close above that. That will give us a nice bullish push. But if it comes down towards this support, You've already touched view at one, two, three times. You don't want it to go through that fourth time. It'll probably test down this 6589. So we'll see what happens here if I get that push or if it stops me out. Hanks, yeah, if you have a system or if you uh, if you have like a setup or any type of rules-based system set up, sure. That, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make your decision process cut and dry so that you can remove emotions from that just to kind of lower your mistakes. So yeah, to your point, if you do have a system and, and a bunch of different things are checked off the list, then yeah. But I, I just mean like number points like this, numbers like this, you know, take them with a grain of salt, be able to kind of factor them into a different trading plan. One of the things I like to use, I like to use multiple indicators to kind of confirm the belief of the trade that I'm looking at. I try not to go off of just one. That's all I was getting at. Well, stay tuned, guys. One of the things that I want to do is later on in the week, uh, let's say towards Thursday and Friday, I'm going to go into specifically how a book teaches you a little bit how to start building a system. Maybe you start taking what's called a ranking system off those indicator, where if they're, if it's in the bullish, you give it a plus one. If it's in the negatives, you get, if it's in the bearish, you give it a negative one. And if it's neutral, you give it a zero. Then you could maybe have like five indicators and start building a system based off of that. We'll teach a little bit about that later on in the week. All right. So Excel, it, it needs to hold here and get back above 66 on the downside is going to get me out. I'll still leave me a couple cents for uh, slippage, which is a, I have an average cost at 65.90. Seven. I'm trying to see Tesla flush here. I haven't even wanted to really look at the chart. Because it looks like it wants to. To your to your point there, it really does. It really looks like it wants to go. It's just taking its time. It's it's slowly grinding down, and which is what I kind of don't want to see, guys. A, a lot of times when I see uh, me getting into shorts, I want to see elevator moves down, but uh, I'm holding off. And one of the things that keeps me is knowing that at this point, since we're below VWAP, I can get out above VWAP and still be break even. So I'm just going to let this try to work here. Vic's kind of curling back up and, and uh, Spy um, sitting there. It's not really selling off yet. Trying to hold it up here. Georgie, I think that says. <laughs> He's saying test... Uh, Disney catching a little support. I was actually talking with Spencer this morning that maybe Disney could catch a little bottom because this one had been going down four weeks before this down uh, downturn in the market. Um, so to me, 150 is very important. But I mean, just kind of sideways action here it does kind of have an inverse head and shoulders type of look right here. So if you pull this down, you would see the neckline here, neckline here, head at this uh, second date of December. We'll see if it can hold that. Get above here, this 150, and you want to see the volume really increase into that move. One thing that it is helping it is you see the money flow, what, above that zero line. Uh, you're also seeing the MFI starting to push on up there towards the 80. Also RSI pushing off the bottom there. Uh, it never really went down so much. It, it went only to about 26, starting to get back up there. It's at 74, 75, so it needs some volume to get through this gap. Uh, but we'll see if it gets through there. 
That's Disney. All right, guys, about to get out of my XL trade if it doesn't hold 66 here. Apple went ahead and – sorry, uh, the alert just went off. So Apple, I went ahead and took more profits. I only have maybe about 10% of my size left on those calls. So Apple, I am out majority of my calls. Do Walmart, says Tony G. Y'all sleeping. You killing it at Walmart, my friend? Well, first of all, we call first of all, Walmart's up one percent today. So let's <laughs> simmer down on the sleeping. Okay. Walmart's oh, up one percent today. And we actually did call some of these retail um things as bouncing and being strong right out of the open. You got We're me excited, Tony now. G, for this. That's what you got me excited for, bro. Come on, man. You're killing me, Smalls. Identify, I identified the right sector, uh, <laughs> the right theme, but Walmart's only up 1% today. All right. What time are you guys finishing up today? Got to go pick up the kids, says Sadat. Hey, can't blame you. We'll get on out of here at 1030 today, guys. We'll be getting into some futures talk at 1030. So stick around, guys. We've got about 22 minutes left. Smash that like. Let's keep it going. All right, guys. Really close on that exhale to stop out like literally on the penny hand on the trigger let's see what's going on in tesla we're gonna get a bounce here we're gonna get the flush down oh yeah. it looks like a bounce there yeah it's, it's flirting with that view app area it's right flirting there. it's flirting we don't want to see it get back above there you see like how this line starts building out if it holds there on this little pullback, pushes through yeah. that VWAP, you could easily start pushing back. So I'm just going to just be calm now. The one thing that helps me is I'm actually above VWAP, not necessarily at VWAP here for the short. DraftKings 30 test, look, took 30 down. Oh, man, well, they got, got pulled right away. Out, out there, guys, on XELE, unrealized, literally, uh, realized zero, unrealized zero. <laughs> So break even trade, I'll be okay with it. I, I gave myself a shot there on XELE and maybe could have taken 6625s. I had 6628 there. It literally rejected my first profit by about three cents. Should have maybe taken it right there at 25s. Hey, it got a little greedy. Hey, let it go. I might take a riskier trade here. I'm gonna look at the NVIDIA 280 puts. Uh grabbed him at eight dollars stop loss would be i'm gonna let this one move around a little bit stop loss won't be till above 290s um but i've got it on my screen here so folks can take a look at it and what do you know just like that i'm already down uh 90 cents on that trade uh but that's what i'm in stop loss would be above 290 i'm hoping for this reject here near view app would be very very nice all right, we're getting Tesla to hit VWAP right now. I want to see a rejection here, not a close above 980s. Our old friend, Smile Direct, uh, <laughs> moving, moving here. Some call sweeps going on. Oh, that's How the... many times have we called out Smile Direct on this Be show? Be careful. Jason's going to get mad at me. <laughs> is he telling to put money in it or something no i i think he knows the ceo and you know that kind of relationship doesn't want to be mean against his friend but it, the stock's crap man yeah <laughs> the stock is crap heavily shorted and some call activity happening though yeah definitely let's take a look now i want to take a look at it <laughs> wait are you still in your tesla trade yeah all right i've got it up here uh Oh, by the way, NVIDIA went ahead and thankfully rejected VWAP so far. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, let me let me go to this look at Smile Direct Club here. What's that daily look at like? God bless. Boy, I got to really zoom Ooh. out here. Looks like we might get a close above 980. That's why I'm watching Tesla right now, guys. I'm going to put up my chart just for a quick second and you while you bring it up. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. So you see right now. You see how it just closed there? It didn't close above 980s there, but it, it got really close. It closed there at 978.87. So I want to see a close above 980s because that would get me out right immediately. All right, putting you back up. Draft yeah, I didn't find really much. In, you didn't, didn't find much. much there. Yeah, there's not much there. Yeah. Uh, bros entry point. Oof. I'll tell you right now, as a bros fan, watch out, guys. In this environment, I don't know, man. 
I, I would try to stay maybe away from it right now uh, because story is not the, the, the main factor in stocks right now. To me, main factor in stocks right now is actually fundamentals. What? Dare I may say it? That's like, that would actually be a great thing. For a little while, I think it's playing factor right now. now. All right, market moving higher. Look how look how Tesla tested up there, rejected off that line. Let's see if we get that right now. I'm about to get out. I'm not liking this Tesla. We can see some quick reaction here. Nvidia not looking too pretty. Still in the trade though. Like I said, I'm gonna let this one move around, so I might take a bigger loss on this one. But so far, it's not looking pretty. To the short side. Walgreens uh, with our Terry. with our uh, retail theme. Walgreens pushing up too. It's up three percent, up a dollar forty today. I, I like TGT. Yeah. Let's see if that reverses today. It did come TGT down to support. Down. TGT opposite of Walmart, which is up still just under a percent here. MGM, LVS, Win, Melco, all of those casino entertainment names uh, up today as well. All right. Well, uh, just to kind of talk about uh, some industries and sectors today, consumer cyclical, definitely strong. We talked about uh, some resorts and casinos. You just mentioned some of those. Definitely strong days out of those. Um, you're seeing 5% day, pen of 4%. What? Could that be a pen bottom? At 48, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. DKNG, how are we doing on DKNG? Also, really a nice strong. little bottom. Really hey, strong. who knows? Maybe we found some bottoms in these gambling stocks. We'll see what happens. Uh, leisure lodging doing well today, guys. So, there's a lot of stocks that are yeah. actually on the upside today. Um, I didn't expect to see that many. Uh, CCL up seven percent. So, it looks like the cruise reopening trade on, guys. SeaWorld up today. I wouldn't have expected that one. Come on, NVIDIA. So, NVIDIA, I'm going to go ahead and grab one more put here. Got it at $6.23. Really hoping that it doesn't blast through two ninety one dollars because that would kind of be I'll, my final straw. I'll test the guys. Stopped out on Tesla? Yeah. Nice job following your rules, though, Mitch. <laughs> uh, I, I can't believe it, but I, I was actually able to lose just one penny on there. So I'll take that. If you follow your rules, I can believe it. <laughs> I'll take friend. that. <laughs> it got close. It got close. It started pushing really fast. So this that I, I, I normally don't – you guys heard me say it. I used the market order. <laughs> smack me, smack me. I never do it, but, hey, sometimes you got to do it. To me, it what it was was I wanted my out regardless of price there, so I just took the out. Yeah, you wanted your fill. You wanted your fill. You're you're willing to go, give up a, a few pennies for that. Yes. I see Unity being uh, mentioned by Proton here. Unity really, really kind of sold off from its highs recently. That was one of those growth names that was really getting kind of shred. Uh, looks like we are trying to form some support here. So if this is able to hold, it'd be interesting to see where we go next. Uh, no position in Unity, but gave back a lot of its gains from the past. Skills popping today, said someone. Skills. NVIDIA flirting with the devil's line right around. Like, I'm hoping for this <laughs> to be line. just <laughs> to pretty much. Like, I'm hoping for this to lettuce, be. Man. Come on. <laughs> pretty much hoping for a double top here on NVIDIA. It just, oh, man. I was hoping for a rejection from VWAP, but I knew. It was a riskier trade, and I might get rammed. <laughs> well, we don't want that one. Get. That might happen here at about, about 20, 30 cents away from my stop loss, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, had two profitable trades in Lucid and Apple. This one might end up being a negative one. We'll find out. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. 
Yeah, and after this trade, I'll go ahead and explain why I took it so we can at least try to get an understanding of the thought process. Matter of fact, if no one's got anything, I'll go ahead and explain the process. Yeah, you guys, ahead. please go ahead and stop me. Uh, all right, so if you're looking at the chart here, NVIDIA on the day is down about you know 6%, right? It was. Uh, you can see how it found some support at the 280 level here, right? So it was like, cool, found some support there. By the way, NVIDIA, I'm out. Good God, hang on one sec, let me... <laughs> let me go ahead and close out. You hear my ringings, you hear my notifications, I am I out. I see you, Ram, I see you, Ram. Go ahead and look out for Zunaid. Yeah. Wait, what do you do? What? Ram, another good call on AMD. He said, he that said that close like your position, Zunaid, close it. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah, I got... I was looking, looking out for you. Chart. That's what I like to see. Appreciate it. Um... Watch it now, flush. But anyway, you can see that it's down 6% on the day. It went ahead and had a bounce at 280. Then it kind of came above VVAP, couldn't quite get completely above it on the long side. Then it came back and rejected, found some support again at 280 and bounced. I went ahead and pretty much took it near this VWAP because I was hoping for another rejection to continue its move down to 280 for a third time or maybe even continue it downwards. But I was wrong. It ended up being a double bottom, if you will. And now it's continuing a little bit higher. I would not be surprised if this one then tries to test maybe 300s. And then I could go ahead and maybe grab some puts for a quick scalp. But for now, I was wrong. I am out of the trade. I wanted to at least explain why I took it in the first place. Um, but on the long side, I missed the 280. On the short side, I didn't get what I wanted. Process always more valuable, Zanade. Much appreciated. Yep, 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 yep. Two and one today. That's all right. I'll take it. Hey, it happens, man. It happens. Do, 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 Let's see what the VIX is doing. Let me go ahead and pull this back up to a three chart. Let's see. Let's see what the VIX is. You're out of the Tesla tree. I'll go ahead and yeah, change that. VIX. Yeah. Might get um, back into Axiali. Tesla. Uh, Airline still holding their highs too. So is Apple for that matter. Tyson having a nice day as well. I think that uh, that um, the value is, is where it's going to be at. That's kind of what we were talking about at the beginning. LGVN pounding the lows. All right, trying to get back into XCLE. Let's see if I get a fill. Still no fill yet, guys. Need a little bit of a pullback. Made a nice push there, so let's see if I get my fill here. But we'll see if we get it. Someone wants a Walmart inside. What is up with Walmart? Why do people care? Hang it's on. the same person. <laughs> I was just trying to look at the chart. Uh... I mean, all right, maybe a little bit of a flag on the 10 minute with Walmart. You can go long above 139 if you really believe in this story. I don't know what the story is, but you know, just looking at the chart. Uh Twitter the question here from Cal about Twitter. I am actually not in Twitter. This this it it scares me a little too much. I'm not sure what I make of the new CEO, to be quite honest with you. Uh I want to see some results first. Twitter really kind of been a tough tough trade good news that jack is out uh in my opinion but no position yet would want to see some more fundamentals here before i actually take a dive on that i am watching it though and it has been strong today so oh shit sorry almost deleted one of my indicators Don't do that. um yeah man, I, I happens to me all the time i get so annoyed i close my chart i'm like dang it yep <laughs> dang it oh nvidia what Mariah. do you know MRIN, pop on volume. Not sure what's going on. All right, guys. Just got to fill again in XEL. XEL 6602 is the fill here. Looking for another push through 6625. Risk is off 6590s here. I'll put my chart up right quick. If you guys can see this, I'll play a little music just so we can enjoy ourselves. That's Who's the first a little one? Too loud. The first one, the name that in the chat gets a swag I shirt. I recognize that. It's a somewhere. swag shirt. Where is that music from? We'll do a little trivia here. Sounds you like guys, who's song. the first one to throw it up in the chat there? We'll see. What oh, gets God. It, it sounds like it? a Bollywood song to me. I, I recognize that. I recognize that. I just can't place it. Mitch, you're killing me. Oh, it's one of my favorite games. I still play it to this day. 
Lion King, good guess, but wrong. Mario? Mario? Oh, here we go. Donkey Kong. Oh, Donkey Kong. Nanya, got, yeah, that is Nanya what it's from. Business. You should, it should have said Nanya Bananas, but there you go. I like the name there. Hey, go ahead and email at me, Mitch at Benzinga, oh, and I'll send you some swag there. That is Donkey Kong from the Super Nintendo days, really. Bill says it's called Please Turn It Off. Man. Everyone's saying Monday it? or something. Come on, I, I know the market's down, down, but you you can't be crying so much, man. No need to be crying, guys. Come on, Nvidia. At this point, I just want you to get bought out and go to a thousand. Don't don't make me do this. Don't. All right, don't guys. XEL looking good here. Let's see if it gets back through the sixty six twenty five area. Let me get that push out. All right, it's 1023, guys, 1023. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting Ryan and Zunaid wrapped on up. I want to give a little bit of information today at least on – let's let's just do a little bit of Bollinger Band talk. I think that will be good. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys go ahead and wrap on up. Ryan, I'll let you go first. Let us know what are you looking out there, what do you see, uh, kind of maybe what was strong, what was not. And what you'll be looking forward to later in yeah, the Yeah, well, we're, we're going to keep watching what we were watching from the morning, right? We're going to keep watching the VIX. We're going to see if we can keep this under 30. Hopefully, the VIX gets melted and we come back in. That should set up for a nice rally. But the interesting things that we noted today out of the open, things like retail. Uh, of course, Walmart is up. Tony, don't don't panic, man. Walmart's up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's continue to watch some of those retailers. Gap was one of the real strong ones today. I thought it was interesting that the airlines are up in addition to to the cruise lines, right? So it looks like maybe that's a bounce back from some of the Omicron headlines we got last week. Let's see if that continues here. And then ultimately, let's see if value is still favored over tech and growth, right? That might help us determine where we're actually going to swing and what the next sector is that we're going to move. Let's see if that continues for the rest of this year. And let's see what sets up for next year. So I'm going to be keeping a big eye on value and tech, the dichotomy between them. And as far as the actual trades for the day here, really going to keep one eye on that VIX at all times uh as for me nvidia went ahead and lost money on that one on the put side explained why we went and took it apple was a nice profitable trade all the way from around the 165s to the 168 so that was nice lucid we had a good short for about two bucks and the remaining we were uh stopped out break even um what i'm kind of looking for what's going to happen at the tesla thousand dollar level I will initially look for a starter position to go short on the thousand dollar side on the thousand dollar um, dollar value in the stock. If it kind of closes above it on the ten minute, then I may consider going long. Also, be taking a look at the VIX. Apple is near VWAP right here. Uh, DocuSign is crossing one forty four. Uh, Apple is near VWAP, so if you wanted to go long, this is a really nice risk reward area here for you. But below it, you would get out. But that's what we've done today. That's what I am looking at, as always. Risk management, it's okay if you lost today. Make sure you have enough capital and you're alive to come back tomorrow. There's no reason for you to win two trades, lose one trade, and now you're down majority of your account or whatever. You get the point. All right, Mitch left us, it looks like, but um, – that's, right that's here, pretty right much. Here. I got you. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll wrap you up right now. I was just going to say. Yeah, uh, you gave Joe, us a little awkward silence there. Joe, yeah, my, that's my fault. I was actually going over the news here for Joe. Joe's mentioning ISIG. ISIG, I guess there was news of it looking at some other strategic alternatives. Uh, so it says here, uh, boost. it's up 41% after the company reported a review of strategic alternatives. So perhaps they're looking to sell them, the, that company. Uh, maybe there'll be a premium paid for it. Looks like that's why that's up here. Um, really no other angle in terms of trading that. All right, guys, let's go ahead. Let's oh, we'll get you guys on out of here. Great trading day for you guys, like always. Like always, Zunaid. Go get some rest, man. I see you having those yeah. rough weekends, partying out there. Yeah, we'll dude, we, we left me some late night calling those calling those games. But I sorry, saw you. I saw you. The grind continues, man. The grind. It was fun. It was a lot I of took fun a last peek. night. I took a peek. I saw oh, did you guys. You, you guys yeah. don't know. Zunaid is <laughs> – this guy's famous. I'm this not famous. famous right here. <laughs> This I'm not famous, more famous but it than was, Ryan and I, at least. Yeah, here. It totally was, is more famous than us. <laughs> it was fun, man. We called some esports last night for the Mavs. It was really fun. 
That's what um, I like to hear. Speaking of which, a buddy of mine did help me set up my stream labs. So if you guys want, follow me on Twitter. You've got the handle there, Made in India. Later tonight, I will go live and try to look at some stocks and some charts and things like that. Uh, so feel free to follow me when I go live. I'll obviously tweet about it. And you guys can come hang with me in the chat. All can right, we guys. hang with you or are we not invited? Are Mitch and I You're not always invited. invited. Okay, Matt, if I could find a way to get you guys on the actual stream, we could do that too. It's my first time, so bear with me. But yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I was just making sure we were invited. That's all. You're invited. Definitely, definitely, the link definitely. is open to everybody. All right, guys. All right, you guys, guys heard it there. Day. Definitely smash the like. Appreciate you guys. All right, guys. We got about two minutes left, so I don't got much that I can teach here, but I'm going to try to do my best to at least give you guys a little description here about what Bollinger Bands are. So Bollinger Bands are those, that, those red lines that you're seeing here. And really what this is is a way to measure price volatility. One is a standard deviation about a mean or moving average, and the other is an ATR. Bollinger Bands are used – use the standard deviation calculation. So a lot of times what's going to happen here is it begins with a 20 period moving average, simple moving average. So SMA, and then two standard deviations are added to the SMA and plotted as an upper band and as a lower band. So what you're pretty much getting here is the extremes of the 20 period moving average. We shouldn't really get around a and out of these. And when you see them expand, like you see them right over here in this area, they were really expanded. That, that means higher volatility. When they contract, like we're seeing now, you could kind of draw the, th those trend lines that you're seeing. You see how everything's getting a little tighter. That shows less price volatility in the name here. Of course, these bands are self-adjusting and they automatically become wider during those periods of extreme price change. So when you see price breakouts, you also want to see that expansion of the Bollinger Band. All right, that's probably going to do it for us. we got about a minute left to before we get on out of here. I'm going to keep watching this XLE. We did trade Tesla short today. We'll see what happens on that one if it comes back down on there. But definitely, we're going to try to do our best to try to teach some in between here. We didn't have too much time today, but definitely smash the like if you guys enjoy that. Uh, Mitch, what are you using? I'm using TC2000. Um, and like always, guys, you guys can use Bollinger Bands for different things, but check it out, guys. Uh, Burrow's 15-minute chart, we'll take a look there, definitely. Up next, you guys got some uh, futures talk here. Uh, let me make sure that I have that redirect set here before I get on out of here. Like always, guys, we're going to have a small cap event later on this week. So Wednesday and Thursday, you guys won't have live trading, but what we'll do is we'll be – hanging out in the chat room, still doing some live trading. Just probably you're not going to be able to see our screens, but definitely hang out with us as we continue trading live and we have our small cap event. Up next, you guys got how to trade futures in a volatile market. So check it out, guys. We'll see you next time. And like always, if you want to go ahead and stay with Benzinga, then live trading right here. Hit us up. Story Investor, Made in India, R. Faluna. You can go ahead and hit us up on our Twitter and we'll see you next time.